Iron is a very important trace mineral and one of the most regularly tested minerals, which means most people know of its importance in the body. Unfortunately, there's also a lot of misinformation out there about iron. So in this video, I want to talk about what exactly iron is, its roles in the body, and how to get enough of it, which means we will talk about iron supplementation at the end of the video. Let's start by discussing what iron is and why we need it. Iron is an essential dietary mineral, meaning we need to get it from food and cannot produce it ourselves. Unlike the macro minerals, so for example magnesium or calcium, which the body needs in big amounts, iron is a trace mineral, meaning the body only needs a fairly small amount of it every day. The RDA for adult men is 8 mg per day, whereas the RDA for adult women before menopause is higher at 18 mg per day. Unfortunately, most people regularly consume much more than their body needs, leading to iron overload, which I will talk about later in the video. First, let's discuss the roles of iron in the body. What you will notice is that since copper and iron work closely together, their roles are very similar. The most important ones are energy metabolism. Iron is needed to carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. This is done through the use of hemoglobin, which is a protein in your red blood cells that carries oxygen to your body's organ and tissues and also transport carbon dioxide from your organs and tissues back to your lungs. About 70% of iron in the body is found in hemoglobin and myoglobin, which is a similar protein that stores iron and oxygen in the muscles. Interesting side note here, myoglobin is also the reason red meat is red. The more myoglobin a meat contains, the darker red it will be. Next, iron is also necessary for a healthy immune system because it is a key mineral that helps with the creation of cells and their growth, especially certain immune cells. Particularly important here are lymphocytes, which are a type of white blood cell that help your body fight disease and infection. People with an iron dysregulation have been shown to have a three to four fold higher risk of having recurrent infections. And lastly, cognitive function. Iron is an essential element in brain metabolism. People with iron dysregulation have also been shown to have adverse changes in neurotransmitters, lower attention span, as well as neurological issues. Let's now talk about food sources of iron. The foods highest in iron are liver, red meat, legumes such as kidney beans, as well as certain grains such as oats. Please keep in mind that iron from food comes in two forms, heme and non-heme. Heme is found only in animal flesh, while non-heme iron is found in plants and animal products, because they too consume plants. Heme iron is generally more easily absorbed than non-heme iron, but both absorption rates can be increased if you eat vitamin C along with your iron source. Okay, at this point we have only talked about the pros of iron, but just like in the case of copper, there is a dark side to iron. It's called iron overload or iron toxicity. Iron toxicity results from two things. One, too much iron ingested through your diet or supplements, along with two, the body's inability to sufficiently eliminate enough iron. You see, most of your body's iron isn't actually supposed to come from the outside, but instead from the body's recycling system. Every day, your body needs about 25 milligrams of iron to function correctly. A large part of that iron is sustained by the recycling process of old red blood cells, with only a small amount estimated to be around two milligrams still needed to be ingested through food. New red blood cells are then made to live for around 120 days, after which they are again broken down and remade. The 2 mg per day of external iron can easily be covered with a little red meat twice a week. If, however, you regularly consume much more than this, or even supplement with high doses of iron, you run into a problem. Why? Because our bodies aren't that great at eliminating excess iron. This excess iron accumulates in a biounavailable form, just like copper can. Biounavailable means that iron is present but cannot be used properly, so it sits there and creates issues. 
Another problem is that since this excess iron cannot be used properly in the body, symptoms can pop up, such as anemia and general fatigue, that often indicate an iron deficiency. This then leads many people to go out and buy iron supplements, which help them in the short run, but make the problems worse in the long run. Over time, iron can replace other elements in the body, and as you know, it attracts oxygen. Then, when it contacts delicate body tissues, the single oxygen molecules act as free radicals and irritate body tissue. This mechanism is called oxidative stress and is a potent cause of inflammation. Your body is literally rusting. What this means is that biounavailable excess iron is not good for you. It's better to make the existing iron work for you that you already have in your body. Doing this requires working with a specialist, because only they can tell whether you have a true iron deficiency or an iron recycling problem. Because iron toxicity is so complicated, it's also a controversial topic, just like copper toxicity. Most practitioners working only with blood tests believe that it can only happen in people with a genetic condition called hemochromatosis. My own experience and that of other experts working with blood and hair analysis says otherwise. Okay, before I wrap up this video, let's go on to the last part, which is iron supplementation. When and how much should you supplement? Like I said earlier, before you supplement, it is important to distinguish a true iron deficiency from an iron recycling problem. Only very few people have a true iron deficiency. One example would be girls or women with very heavy periods, or people who suffer from regular blood loss. In those cases, low-dose iron supplementation of a few milligram could be an option, but you would have to evaluate this on a case-by-case -case basis and might still want to opt for more natural foods such as red meat. Again, this is a very complicated topic that is nearly getting the attention it deserves. But I can tell you this, popping high doses of iron supplements on a daily basis is definitely not the answer to your anemia and fatigue. To end this video and summarize the most important learnings, iron is an important trace mineral that plays a big role in your energy system, immune system, and cognitive function. Unfortunately, many people suffer from iron dysregulation that is often not diagnosed through regular blood tests. This is also known as iron overload, biounavailable iron, or iron toxicity, and can cause all kinds of metabolic problems. Because of the complexity of iron, be careful of blindly supplementing it and make sure to consult an expert if you need help.